Welcome back to another episode of the Who Cast. Who Cast 28. Wow. Can't believe it. Who cast? Who cast? More life. More life to the Who Cast. Cheers to the Who Cast. Cheers. Sauce Man, we're speaking off camera before the t- show started, discussing our weekends. I'm glad you had a good weekend. I'm glad you had a nonstop weekend hanging out with your high school friends. I'm glad I had a had a nice, relaxing weekend with, with my lady. Had some friends. We really, we really took this weekend, honestly, more than anything, to enjoy the backyard that that we finally. Yeah, because so. you got to enjoy that sun while we got it um, exactly. until summer, at least. It was here for like forty eight hours, and then said, "I'll see you next weekend." Like a divorced parent's child going back home for the week. Right, right. <laughs> that was a good analogy. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. David, what it's are we getting? Sad, though. Yeah, it was, it was sad. It was sad, but so is so is some gloomy weather after after a nice sunshine. But hey, it's Portland, Oregon, man. Eastern Valleys. Yeah, exactly. You know, you signed up for it when you moved here, and I love uh, Portland. I was born here, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, I moved here when I was when I was a teenager. But I I very much enjoy um, these overcast days. I don't know why. Even when I was a kid in like uh, Alabama, I was like, man, there's just something so cool about about overcast. I don't know why. It just matches my soul. Sauce man, what are we getting into today? Well, you know, uh, you know how we've been running things. We do a season, then an in between episode, and we just did an in between episode, which means we're back on seasons. We're on season so, six today, I believe. No, season seven. I knew that. We're on season seven, um, and it's Matt Smith's last season. Uh, however, a uh, little disclosure for this episode: we're running uh, just the first thirteen. We're including the Christmas special that happens in between um the first five episodes uh and the next six the snowman episode uh but we'll not be covering the name of the doctor in this episode we're going to be covering that in a second specials uh episode like we did with david Tennant. yes well we will also be discussing the the 50th anniversary as well right and the reason why we're doing that is because uh the, the the last episode of this season, Name of the Doctor, kind of goes in with the rest of the specials. You know, Night of the Doctor, Day of the Doctor, Time of the Doctor. So, uh, so, and it's way more fun to have like a second set of specials like we did with David Tennant. So, yeah. we're going to run it that way. Yes. Um, so, the last episode we'll be covering today is Nightmare in Silver, which is still a really good episode. So, um, any thoughts before we go into discussing this season? Uh, this one was... Uh, a lot different, I think, than the rest of the seasons we've talked about because it's very split. You know, like we wa- we got like the first five episodes and then they took a break and then we got a Christmas episode and then they did the rest of the season. Yeah. So it was it was kind of all over the place. Yeah. I'm really glad that they were able to give us such um, a solid season um, with all of the transitions happening at the time, transitioning, uh, you know, Matt Smith's last season, um, getting ready for the 50th, um, changing out of the uh, companions, even the doctors eventually. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world of Doctor Who at this time, and I'm very happy with this season. And this season is the introduction of Clara. So, you know, super excited about that. Let's get it going. All right. So uh, uh, season seven, episode one, Asylum of the Daleks. Uh, quick synopsis of this episode. Uh, Dr. Amy and Rory get kidnapped by the Daleks to go to their home planet on Scarrow and answer a mysterious call that is coming from their planet. Um, we meet the Dalek Congress, and from there they get shot into the planet, and uh, they are around... They have to wear bands to protect themselves from... Uh, uh, like tiny little Dalek particles that change you into a Dalek over time. Yeah. And uh, they get down there, but they're trapped down there. And they run into some people who have been dead for a while and don't realize it. Meanwhile, they, uh, they lose one of uh, Amy loses her bracelet and uh, her and Rory, you know, they're currently not together in this episode. Uh, they had a little bit of a falling out, which they talk about later. And they hear from Clara for the first time, and she is helping them through the facility as they're running into Daleks who have, you know, been turned off, are in pieces, are decrepit. And they find an exit pad that they can use, but they need to rescue Clara first. 
So um, while Rory and Amy, they wait on the platform, the doctor goes and gets her and he goes through intensive care, which are all the Daleks that dealt with the doctor, but couldn't cope. And then he realizes as he gets into Clara's chamber, you know, like uh, she always talks about making souffles, that she's the souffle girl. And he, and you know, I've always, I've been asking the entire time, where do you get the milk? Because if you've been trapped down there for a year, you know, obviously you haven't had anything. And it turns out the reason why she's in intensive care is because they did a full uh, conversion into a Dalek. So this version of Clara, uh, Oswin, is trapped inside of a Dalek. And she it was so distraught about it that she thinks that she's just been trapped in a room uh, for a couple years. Turns out that she was in uh, a spaceship that had crashed there with all those people who had died before, mm-hmm. but they thought she was so smart that they turned her into a Dalek. Incredible. Clara's first episode's first episode of that season. I didn't, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Oh, yeah, and they escape. But an important thing here that, that I forgot to mention is the fact that the doctor had his name erased from everything in that episode. Yes. Um, so because he, he had gotten too big. And I think uh, a testament to that is probably had to do with um, when a good man goes to war. You know, like, you know, everyone was so afraid of him. They think of his name as that means warrior. And he he just he realized that it was he was too big. Time to time to go back to being the man in the shadows, the myth, the legend, the story time hero. Yeah, great episode. You know, um, really big fan of this. Great start. Yeah, great start to this episode. Introducing Clara um, right off the rip, you know, showing progression in time. You know, Rory and Amy both look not necessarily aged up, but they look like they're fully formed adults at this point and to see kind of like where they are in their own personal lives and then kind of get thrusted back into uh, the shenanigans of the doctor. It's really cool because like throughout that episode, they are kind of dealing with um, like their what happened. Like Amy's like a model now. Right. And like uh, right. Rory's just kind of like cast it off to the side. He's not he's not feeling very loved, you know, which is oh, crazy. Well, to what happened was is we find out like later in the episode that Amy broke up with Rory yeah. because she realized she couldn't have kids anymore after what had happened with River. Yeah. So she said that she gave him up and that she loved him just as much as he loved her. But he mm-hmm. said none of that mattered and that's why they get back together. Yeah. I feel like that's something that they could have talked about. But you know, drama and stuff. It's like all the stuff like going on with the doctor and like all the times Rory's been like so kind. I feel like Rory could have just been like, it's all well, good. Well, I know, but like, you know, Amy, you know, she loves Rory so much and she yeah. knows how much, uh, you know, kids mm-hmm. are a big thing for him. And yeah. I think when you really love somebody and, and you know how much that means to them, mm-hmm. you know, you can't just brush that away. I mean, yeah. It obviously worked out in them for in, in in the end of that episode, but like that's a big conversation for any relationship. Like if you both find out all of a sudden you don't agree on whether or not you're having kids, that is a usually mate means it's or break. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's that's, not that's very like many of those too. If you think about it, like in relationships, like big questions like that'll make or break. But kids, definitely kids, jobs, right? Uh, kids, political, jobs and political backgrounds, religion. That, that one. Yeah, those ones I feel like are a little less prominent, depending on the religion and mm-hmm. depending on the party. Yeah, uh, but jobs and kids are probably the biggest ones for sure, for sure. This episode gives me a four out of five. Um, I remember really liking this episode. I am very close to starting this season. A couple episodes off. Um, we watched, I think, like just like one episode of Doctor Who. It was like a slower episode, so. When you watch the slower episodes, mm-hmm. you're just like, I'll take a day and then come back. To the yeah, day. yeah. You know? It's when you watch the good episodes, you're like, we can watch a couple just more. Keep, this let me is too watch good. a couple more. This is so good. Yeah. That's exactly how I feel. But I remember really, That's really, really liking Atlanta. this episode. Like Atlanta, I'm like, oh, whenever like a good episode happens, I'm like, we got to watch another. Too yeah. good. After we get to 5,000 on Doctor Who, we'll, we'll, do the, we'll do an Atlanta podcast. Oh, that'd be so dope, man. <laughs> we talk about that show a lot. Yeah, it's so, so many people are going to tune in thinking it's a podcast about the city of atlanta and be like my bad, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> i've been to atlanta like twice it's nice very gay not bad what do you rate this episode 4.5 for me i think that um 
the B plot is okay. Mm-hmm. I think it could be stronger. I think, uh, you know, Amy and Rory's thing is like, it's important uh, of a conversation of topic, but like you said before, I feel like they would have talked about it. Yeah. Um, like, obviously, I think it is a make or break conversation, but I don't think Amy or Rory is just like, after everything they've been through, they're like, mm, yeah, we're not talking about that. We're going to break over over that. Like, mm. That, that like, make sense. how do you break up with somebody or like and not at least like talk to somebody that literally like guarded like a little block that you were in for like 2000, you know, like all of the space time crazy adventures. You can't have a conversation with somebody like about your body. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Also, it literally involves River Song, too. So it's like, and, you know, I yeah. Know. I mean, it's not like the worst B plot. It's no. just like. Compared to the rest of the episode, mm-hmm. like Clara mm-hmm. and how she's like flirting with the doctor and yeah. Rory and like being really fun. Uh, that Clara. I think adds a lot of character to the episode. And the twist ending is also just really great. Yeah. Oh, and then obviously the Dalek Congress is like one of the coolest things ever. Like like the entire setup and mm-hmm. like the emperor and also the agent that catches the doctor at the beginning who doesn't realize that she's a sleeper agent like at all and then all of a sudden it pops out of her head yeah that that it's it's honestly an incredible start um very creative so yeah you know it's weird though because i feel like the daleks always talk about how the doctor is like their number one enemy and how much they want him gone but then they're like oh but we have a problem on our fucked up planet do you want to take care of that for us yeah it's, that's kind of weird <laughs> yeah i remember like in the U- youtube short about the daleks like they 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 literally like like forced a collaboration with this alien race and then like immediately after they served their purpose they betrayed them and killed them like they're literally the worst of the worst like literally like the yeah. worst of the worst i yeah. uh good for a good dalek is a dead dalek for sure for sure all right uh oh yeah did you have any other thoughts on this episode I love Clara. Right, right. I will say, I'm glad she's in the season. I'm glad she's in the show now. Uh, I also am a big fan of this next episode, uh, "Dinosaurs on a Spaceship." Yes, uh, this one's a cool one. We get mm-hmm. uh, we get Mr. Weasley from Harry Potter on it, and it turns out he's Rory's dad. Yeah, witness protection. Uh, and what's great about this episode is, you know, uh, we, you know, the Doctor and Amy and Rory, they're on the ship. Um, but they accidentally take Rory's dad with them because he's like changing a light bulb and the TARDIS materializes around it. And then they go onto this spaceship that has a bunch of like trophies on it. You know, there's a, there's a game hunter, there's dinosaurs, there's killer robots, uh, Nefertiti. Uh, I believe she's uh, not a Pharaoh, but like a something, something higher up on the ranking. And, uh, you know, they run into another Harry Potter character too, I think. No, 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 no. I'm mixing that up for another one. I thought I, <laughs> British shows. I thought I thought the guy who played Filch was in this episode, but yeah. he's actually in a later Christmas later special. Christmas special yeah. uh, but the guy who owns the ship is like this terrible dude, and he has been like keeping a bunch of stuff there captive because he's all in it for the money. Um, this is this is a pretty crazy episode. I, I like. Uh, how fast paced moving it is. And as we go along and, you know, like uh, the doctor, when he finally confronts the bad guy, he like just straight up punishing him. Like, mm-hmm. he's just like, Nope, this thing is going to crash. And because you decided that you wanted to dip out, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. This whole thing's going to blow up and that's on you. Uh, it's a little darker, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a pretty intense episode. Uh, probably a uh, four out of five for me. Four out of five. Five. I remember not liking this episode as much as the other ones until the very end. I dug like the ending, but the setup and kind of like the middle parts were a little bit drier for me. Um, but this mm-hmm. is also one of the episodes that I don't remember much about except for the dinosaurs and the spaceship and a little bit of the ending. Um, but with that in mind, off of those things that I remember, I'm going to have to maybe give it a 3.5. I remember liking mm-hmm. it, but not being one of my more favorite episodes of the season. Right. Right. Uh, and I mean, I, I had to rewatch it recently a little bit cause I had trouble remembering mm-hmm. I, I, the ending was like the main thing I remember. I remember yeah. him just being pretty brutal to the dude. And I think I've noticed that, that, that kind of happens in the first couple episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they talk about it more in the next one. Um, 
But yeah, you're right. It definitely could have been a little bit stronger. I think it was more of a showy episode. That's like definitely. we got dinosaurs. Yeah. This this is a game hunter. Yeah. They, Whenever they don't have something that either is like a special guest, a historical figure, or something that drives the uh, main plot of the season, you gotta you kind of have to lean into the Doctor Who kind of vibe of it if you're gonna tell a good episode. Hence, dinosaurs on a spaceship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got dinosaurs. We got dinosaurs. We got, we got a spaceship. We got the Doctor doing some dope stuff. Episode. And and honestly, that right. works a lot of the time for me. You know. Because when you have yeah, a show that's been on the air for that long, it's kind of impossible to avoid some sort of formula. So if the formula works, man, you know, I'm I'm definitely work. down. And I love. And it's not love. like they're not. It's not like they don't change it up every now and again. Exactly. And it kind of it kind of kind of morphs, but yeah. there there's just kind of some repeat sort of in in uh in flow of episodes. Yeah. I would um, say that one of the uh one of the main components of the Doctor Who formula is unpredictability, which is why it's one of my favorite shows. Right, right, right. And I think, you know, the other problem with this episode in particular might be the fact that it's surrounded by also really good episodes. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, you know, you would go from the Asylum of the Daleks to this and then A Town Called Mercy, which is also a really good episode. Yeah. Like, it's, it, and then, you know, like, there's a, there's a lot of uh, unbalanced in, like, quality of episodes for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, something I've noticed about, the showrunners over at Doctor Who is that they always seem to kind of manage to, uh, well, I guess the more time you have with something, the better you do at it anyway. But like, if you look at like the last season of Tenet, Smith, and even most recently Whitaker, it seems like their best work seems to come at the end. And I wonder if that's right, they, working with it more. I think it's because, you know, they, they kind of know what to write for that doctor now. Mm -hmm. Like they know, how to make it more interesting and like just amp it up a lot. Yeah. I think that's why. Um, and you know, the, like, there's still some like, er, er, like judgment of error. Like this season isn't perfect by no means. No, of course not. Um, nothing, nothing is perfect except for the fourth season of Dr. Who. That's, that's perfect. <laughs> golden era. Yeah. Golden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving right, right along. Uh, episode three, a town called mercy. Um, we pausing? Uh, no, we're good. Work pause. Just edit a, out. Okay. Just, no, you just edit this out. Uh, this yeah. is mail mail delivery. Um. Anyway, town called Mercy. Um, I'm edit it out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Start dropping <laughs> inwards. <laughs> nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> Got a cut? I don't know. <laughs> Where'd it go? All right. Uh, town Called Mercy. So this episode, uh, the Doctor, Amy, and Rory, they end up in a town that is a little more advanced than it should be. They notice that they have like lights set up and uh, certain things that are just a little ahead of its time. Um, except there is a border around the town that no one's supposed to cross because this cyborg shows up and wants to kill them. Um, and uh, the, the whole thing is that he is hunting down this other doctor who is a doctor of war who did augmentations on warriors to make cyborgs that won the war very quick but when they went to deactivate them not all of them got deactivated one got away and started killing off everybody who was involved with it and he's the sole survivor so when the doctor realizes that he's here for somebody not to kill everybody he figures out that there's somebody else and then uh you know, that doctor, he starts making points that they're very similar and the doctor does not like that. And he like throws him outside of the line and he's like, the cyborg is coming to kill him. Uh, thankfully, though, the the sheriff steps in front of the blast and he takes the front of the force. Um Oh, I, and I skipped over, you know, like uh, the doctor finds out about all the atrocities. He breaks into the alien ship and finds out everything it looks like an egg like it's kind of weird uh the ship yeah the ship the that, that, that he came in is like a big like rock egg kind of oh thing. i think it's said the letter like the letter a I was like that's interesting no no <laughs> that's funny um so yeah then uh the the cyborg tells them tomorrow morning i'm gonna come through here if anyone gets in the way sucks and uh, they decide that they're going to help that doctor anyway, so they put 
his, the mark that he has on his face, on each of their faces, and they kind of played a little diversion action and try to try to drive them apart. And uh, he figures out that the doctor has gone back to a ship, but instead of leaving, he sets it for self-destruct and blows himself up. And the cyborg doesn't know what he's going to do, so he's going to go to the desert to just blow himself up. But then they say, well, what if you protect this town? And they're like, all right. And then he becomes sheriff. And that's it's very fun. I it's, love this episode, man. There's just something so, like, cinematic about this episode. Maybe lore cinematic. but Yeah, like, yeah. It feels like like a very cohesive start, middle, end. And I love the way that the cyborg looks. And it's very cool, the doctor, um, like, wanting to chastise this man. But they're sent, they're, the, 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 the other war doctor is just pointing out all these similarities. And the Western background is fun. Yeah, man. Uh, definitely 4.5 mm-hmm. for me on this episode definitely yeah 4.5 for me also um i think the ending's a little cheesy making mm-hmm. him the sheriff like yeah. it's cool like it's heartfelt a cyborg sure. with a hat <laughs> yeah and then the in the and the sheriff the badge sheriff. on him yeah and i'm just like it's it's right like you know um there there are some really I think strong moments though, more than the cinematic parts of this Mm -hmm. where, you know, he talks about how you don't get to pick your punishment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's super important too. Like you, like he decides like, Oh, well I moved here and I'm helping these people with their lives. And it's like, and I'm, you know, in this remote nowhere town, he's like, no, you can't do that. You don't get to choose. And like the doctor, you know, he gets really dark too, where when he throws him outside of the line, he points a gun at him, Mm -hmm. which is just something he doesn't do. And, you know, Amy, she fires off a gun, but she doesn't know what she's doing. So, like, <laughs> when she points out that, you know, this is why he shouldn't travel alone mm-hmm. because, you know, he gets dark and jaded. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's there are also some funny moments, too, though, with uh, the not a he's not a pastor. What is he? Is he like a, he's like a preacher. Preacher, maybe. Well, yeah, the you know, like the only black guy in the episode, the, the preacher guy. Yeah. He he says, um, "This is Joshua, my horse." Mm-hmm. And Matt Smith's like, "No, his name is Susan, and he wants you to respect like his life choices. choices." Yeah. <laughs> that was such a popular meme for a while. Like I remember seeing that meme like for a yeah. while. Um, it's pretty funny. It was a pretty funny, a pretty funny meme. Um, that is a very quotable, um, like I still see that pop up like every now and then on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. Same. Um, same. yeah, it's very, that's, that's a very quotable, um, moment. I feel like I see, I see, I just feel like I see it all the time of all the episodes. Yeah, of Doctor yeah. Who. Um, maybe that's, maybe that, like that meme is why I remember that episode so much. Cause I remember really liking that episode, but it's not my, my glowing five or anything, but I did give it a 4.5. So I do really like yeah. it, you know? Yeah, no, it is. It is really good. Um, you know, it's just like not not everything in it is perfect. It's yeah. it's a very fun episode. I think that's what's important about it. Yeah. Like, because there's that other moment with the the guy, the kid who has like never shot anybody before, and mm-hmm. he's like, "Violence doesn't end violence; it extends it." I'm like, that's a really powerful moment too. Yeah. Like another teachable moment without really pushing it on us. Yeah, I think there's just a, there's a lot of good stuff in the episode. It's a lot. They 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 do pack a lot because I feel like it's a really well written episode because there are there are a lot of like different moving parts and themes like you know it's the west but there's cyborgs and there's there's doctor turmoil and the doctor is also yeah uh, he had been traveling alone for a while so he's darker like there's a lot of moving parts but it yeah. all it all it all uh quite I, a cocktail I, yeah it, i feel like it could have easily been kind of like a flimsy one and done like little filler episode but it it is a one-off episode that that has stuck with me for a long time so yeah Definitely right. 4.5. Like, I would say like a direct comparison with like <clears throat> like taking just a general thing and then making an episode about it. So like how this takes the West is kind of, I could compare it to a later episode that we'll review later, the spiders in the UK. Mm-hmm. There they threw a theme and then that's just kind of it. Like it doesn't add up to anything. And I think that's that that's kind of like what can happen with some of their episodes they kind of they have to work it into the season it has to be about Mm -hmm. it's got to connect with with other themes that are going on and and have powerful moments 
I think another fun in between episode we could do next time is uh, reading and discussing the Chris Chinball interview. <clears throat> where he kind of like goes over um like everything that happened on the show and why he won't be returning and all of that stuff you know very curious yeah we can do that as our yeah as our in between yeah i love that yeah exactly like our next in between just to kind of give you know at base like us some more insight because we only know so much about like there we only got we only saw like the end result and people having their opinions online but i'm very curious to see what happened behind the scenes you know Right, right, right. All right, episode four, uh, The Power of Three. Um, now, I, I had to rewatch this one because I really did not remember it. Um, I'm looking it up because I, I don't remember either. It's the little cubes. Oh, like a bunch yeah. Of yeah, 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 yeah. So this is very fresh in my mind. Like, I, I had to rewatch it to figure out what was going on. And I kind of remember not liking this episode, but upon rewatching it, it's okay. <laughs> there, it's not the most memorable episode because um, they're, 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 the whole premise is the cubes show up one morning and nothing is happening with them. And they have people watching him and he gets really bored. And there's just, just the year of the slow invasion and the doctor has to come live with them and he misses them a lot. And that's why he keeps... Uh, he, uh, this one also has the guy who plays Mr. Weasley in it. Um, and he spends like all of his time watching cubes. And uh, we also get the introduction to uh, Kate Stewart, um, the runner, the who can who uh, oversees unit in the oh science God, department. That was her first episode. Was the cube episode, bro? Mm-hmm. They literally just brought her back, and they're bringing her back for the hundredth episode. Oh my god, yeah. dude! Kate Stewart's had some tenure on the Doctor. Yo, yeah, let's go. Because I remember, um, I like always think that uh, Time of the Doctor, um, is her first episode, or or um, and then like she's one of the main characters in the Zygon inversion. It's like, damn, I didn't know. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fun yeah, fact. You didn't even mean to. But that's a fun fact for me. <laughs> um. But you know, like this episode, it, it's 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 interesting in a way that of how someone would invade Earth. Like, mm-hmm. I totally think that it's an interesting tactical strategy. Um, I don't know that it was totally written and executed as well as I'd want, uh, I'd like, because you know, the B plot is basically like what they do with their home life while they're there. Like, the Rory being a nurse and Amy, you know, doing. I think she writes for a travel journal. Um, you know, she is. Uh, or I guess the doctor is, you know, having to deal with regular life, which I think is sort of more like a half idea. Like, cause you know, we're not really put in the situation whenever we're like trying to understand how the doctor is. I feel like it, it makes the episode a little lackluster. Um, it's still an all right episode, but anyway, as, as it goes on after a few months, the, the cubes turn on all of a sudden. And they all start doing different things. One starts like opening, one can float and shoot lasers. Another one takes blood samples and then uh, shows their heartbeat. And uh, we find out later that uh, the re- what is happening, the cubes are controlled by this race called the Shakri, which exists between dimensions. And they are trying to destroy humans before they spread their plague among the stars and kill countless people. So... Uh, they 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 stop. They have to stop the boxes because they basically send out an electromagnetic pulse to stop everyone's Earth. So it, each each cube takes out the closest human to it. So and then they end up using that against itself by also sending out another pulse to restart everybody's hearts, but it causes the ship to explode and they they get out in time. They reverse and then the Amy, polarity. Yeah, and then then. then that a- Amy and Rory have to decide, you know, which life do they keep the real life or the life with the doctor? And then they decide, well, you don't have to choose. <laughs> they were really wrong. It was like the next episode. That's great. Uh, this, nah, this, fuck it. <laughs> uh, um, probably a 2.5 for me on this one. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 I think had I not rewatched it, it would have definitely been a one, but there's some, there are some rewatches. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of what's been happening with me. Um, 
and I might want to do like a couple more in betweens, uh, just so I can kind of catch back up again. Cause I don't, I don't like, like, uh, like hearing about it and then like rewatching it, you know, loses kind of like mm-hmm. some of the, uh, the rewatchability, but it is fun kind of like, re- like reviewing it and then kind of like watching along and like kind of being more critical of it because I know what's going to happen and seeing like how the acting is and how the costumes right. are and like the pacing, pacing so big, you know, um, you definitely get that critical view on the episodes, which I think is pretty cool. You mm-hmm. know, because the like the way you're going at it, like you definitely get to find your more critical voice. Yeah. When when you like you're expecting stuff, but you're watching everything that is taking place mm-hmm. uh, to make it happen. Yeah, so. I can pay more attention to the details for sure. Um, but I would say that for this episode in particular, I feel like it kind of goes back to this point of like. Did do you notice that Stephen Moffat kind of like wanted to like not necessarily humanize the doctor, but he really put Stephen Moffat put the doctor in like some dude's house, made him play soccer, made him be on Earth for a year. You know, like he he did all these things with the doctor to like put him next to humans and show him like what his personality is like, like what does he sleep, like what does he eat. You know, it's like all these different situations. And I feel like this episode kind of leaned into that, too, for like the B plot. Um, I remember not really like caring about the cubes at all, uh, just because I don't know, I'm a I'm a action guy. So the, the cubes I, weren't doing anything, you know, like um, like those well, little balls Moffitt, from the master. Stephen Moffat pointed out in an interview um, that one of the driving things about his uh, take on Doctor Who when he was the showrunner was that, you know, he wanted to remind people that as much as you've watched Doctor Who, you don't know anything about this man. Yeah. Like, uh, like he wanted to remind people like that, you know, you don't know what he did before this. You don't know what, how he acts, how he, how he looks. And like even watching an iteration of Matt Smith, that's just that version mm-hmm. of the Doctor doing those things. Yeah, exactly. So we don't really understand the complex thing that's going on inside that guy's head how could you you know the 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 man isn't yeah. even a man it's a miracle props to the props to the writers and props to the actors for being able to craft so many stories not always the best but so many stories like with such a abstract concept and such a, a detached hero you know a man who can regenerate right. and has two hearts doing saving all the time and space. That's such a big thing. And I know it's a big sandbox you can play in, but sometimes too much, uh, too much sand, you know, you can't make what you want to do. So it's, it's really cool to see that, um, that these writers have, have crafted so many episodes period. And we're getting to the hundredth episode as well. Right. Right. Well, the, the thing is too, I think with, um, with, with with the whole sort of take on the doctor, I think it's more of a message of, you know, you know, we go through our lives and, you know, we're totally different people, like as we grow and like, you know, the person who you were when you're 18 is very different from who you are now. And I think the idea is, is, you know, like when, when Stephen Moffat saying, we don't know this person, I think at the same time, I don't think other people really know who you are either and mm-hmm. that you know yourself best and what you're mm-hmm. capable of. Wow. And, I like that. Yeah. So like, it's the same thing with the doctor, you know, only the doctor knows who they are. Mm-hmm. Moving right along to, uh, the, uh, I guess the finale of the first part of this season, mm-hmm. uh, which is angels take Manhattan. Uh, very good episode. Um, parts of it. I'm not a fan of, but, it's at least I think it's an interesting take on angels that uh, is a better piece of writing than the previous one. Uh, maybe not executed perfectly, but I like the writing a lot more. It makes more sense to me in that way. Um, so angels take Manhattan. It's uh, it starts off where Rory, Amy and the doctor are visiting New York. And uh, you know, the doctor is reading a mystery novel uh, that he, he really likes, but for some reason, um, you know, he, uh, he doesn't want to read the endings. He does not like endings. And, uh, he, he basically rips out the last page and leaves it. Um, and then Rory, Rory disappears and they find out that he has been taken to, 
uh, a specific time in New York and they can't seem to get to the exact point of where he is. When they finally get the TARDIS to like force through and, and get to this uh, hotel, uh, it turns out that Rory is constantly living his life every day there until he dies. Uh, because the angels have made a human farm for people with potential, uh, potentially great lives, which is, I think is the, one of the coolest take on the angels. Like that's like the evilest they have ever been to a point where they're making a farm and just wasting out humans days Dude. living the exact same day in a hotel. Just suck like that is, life. that's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Easy. Ri- uh, ri- uh, River Song shows up too, and uh, they they think that she's very involved because she is on the cover of the book that he was reading. Um, but it turns out as they're uh, as as they're going through it, that every single chapter is something that happens while they're going through the hotel, and they're trying to break the the chain because it looks like it's going to be amy's goodbye Mm -hmm. and he's like trying to stop that from happening so he's going to stop river from breaking her arm and stop a bunch of stuff from happening she does end up breaking her arm but hides it and he uses his regeneration to heal her and she gets really pissed off the creepiest thing that happens is when they go to the basement and they find baby angels and they have that scary ass laugh i want them to explore that more i want there to be more baby angel episodes because that is vicious yeah, um, the last um, the last uh, special of Jodie Whittaker this year was about Weeping Angels, and I'm pretty sure the Doctor is like kind of turned into one at some point. I saw a trailer for it a while back, so that that that's that's going to be really interesting to kind of come back to because there's not really many Weeping Angel episodes after this, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, there's only so much I think you can write for that those kind of enemies, but. Yeah. Um, you know, it's there's, there's, you know, I think they've really maxed out on a lot of the potential stuff that can come from it. Great episodes, um, too. I really like Angels yeah. in Manhattan, especially the ending. Yeah, the I, I think it's and even though it's so it's sort of a simple premise to mm-hmm. like to to like beat the angels, like it's basically just break the time stream, hope it works out. Yeah, and um, and they've done that a lot. Like Amy, I feel like the only people who could do that would be Amy and Rory because they've kind of defied a lot of what happens in their universe. Yeah. So I think because they're specific, complicated space time events, that's why it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that what what they do to solve the problem, Amy and Rory jump off the, the top of the building because then he won't be there to make anything uh, to to continue his life there. So a, a bunch of the time stream breaks down. And they tell they they find out that they are back in a courtyard, and then he finds his name, and it turns out there was one surviving angel that uh, was able to get him again. And Amy, she says that she wants to be with him, and she goes with him to live in the hotel forever. It's pretty sad. Uh, and then it turns out that Amy's goodbye is written on, on the last page, so he runs back to where they were at the start and reads the goodbye. Um, yeah. It's it, pretty, it's so sudden. Sad. It's so sudden, and I remember when I first watched it, like I was like, "No, really, this, this is the goodbye." Like this, this right here. Like I would, I didn't have time to take a shower. I didn't put on my good shoes. Like, like this is it right here. Like, and it makes sense. Like that when it came out on network television that this was the mid season finale because they were about to um, bring in a new uh, companion and. Man, what what a ride Amy and Rory was. You know, um, Mandy likes mm-hmm. to call them the people that keep dying and coming back, or keep almost dying and coming back, because um, their 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 adventures were so like intense that they often would like Rory getting sucked into the time stream, having to wait outside uh, the Pandorica for two thousand years, Amy being a flesh avatar, and then having your baby be raised to go and kill the Doctor, and like all of the things that they did. You know. Um, and then also, you know, fish fingers and custard, man. A- Amy is a little yeah. kid being by herself and then seeing the doctor and whatnot, being the girl who waited all of these adventures and just like that. But that's kind of what the whole Amy and Rory thing was, was all of all of their plots together was about their relationship. 
Amy being doubtful that she wanted to be with Rory. Rory being doubtful of if he was man enough to be this woman's protector. And then later on, if they if they want to uh, still be with each other, even though she can't have any more kids after the uh, River Song debacle. And then it, it, it it's kind of it's kind of beautiful in a way because it's like even though like Amy and the doctor like knew each other like when they were like basically like both like super super young you know the whole thing was about get the doctor getting to chew even though it bit him in the ass I mean he was so sad when Amy left but Amy chose Rory Amy's choice Amy right cho- Amy chose Rory and she chose to be with Rory and never see the doctor again instead of have a full life with the doctor and I think that that's kind of sweet because at the beginning she ran away with the doctor she didn't she chose right to not go through with the marriage and and just and just travel with the doctor for forever but mm-hmm. then she ended up it's cool it's like a full circle kind of thing you know yeah because they're very different and, yeah. you know they talk about in the episode before how they had kind of aged 10 years ahead of where they should have been mm-hmm. um so that's that, that's kind of interesting you know like after all that time you know like she, you know, she got it all out. Like she got her perspective from the universe. Yeah, and ultimately made the choice that you know, without Rory, she won't be happy. So, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Uh, four point five out of five for me on this one. Yeah, four point five. I feel like sometimes the Doctor will have these kind of like setups that aren't really like a setup. It's something that can like be happening. So when like what's really the episode is about happens, you're like, oh, okay. We may we had to go through yeah. the we had to go through the angels in Manhattan to get to get here, where it's the end of Amy and Rory, which is cool. Right. You know, I I I was sad. I was sad, but knowing what what but having have watched the show and knowing what comes, I am very very happy. And you know, I would argue that Amy and Rory in maybe more contemporary who have kind of almost overshadowed the popularity of Rose in recent years. I hear so much. And I think it's just how famous Karen Gillian is nowadays. She's in like so many big budget movies. She is definitely the most successful companion, maybe other than Billy Piper. Cause Billy Piper has been famous since like the eighties, but um, I mean, David Tennant too. Like yeah, he, David he's Tennant, been in so many yeah, things. Yeah. He was the first that one guy, to do a Marvel yeah. role, <laughs> you know, like out of all those guys, purple man. Yeah. You know? That's true. And I'm not saying these guys haven't had any success. I mean, just look at Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi, like all, especially the doctors, but the companions specifically, Karen Gillian, in my opinion, has had such an illustrious career. She was a guard in Guardians yeah, of the like, Galaxy, Ar- Jumanji. Darvel, I think he was in Legends. Yeah, he's the time traveler, which I always thought was so funny. He's the time traveler in uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was funny. Yeah. All right, you ready for the next one? I am ready for the next one. Like we said, that was like a uh, a the mid season break, and we went into a Christmas special. So we're number six is the Snowman. The Snowman. Uh, this is a very interesting episode. So we get to take a look at a new TARDIS and uh, a new look for the Doctor, which I kind of like more than the last one. He went from like Tweed Professor to like just like this dapper sort of upper class looking dude. I love that. Um, in this episode, uh, you know, we, we meet a girl who looks a lot like Oswin, who is a barmaid, uh, also governess. And she runs into the doctor who is hanging out with his friends in uh, Victorian London with uh, Strax, Jenny Flint, and what Ma- madame vastra mm-hmm. yeah i think that's her name yeah she's the lizard lady mm-hmm. and uh they're just sort of keeping an eye on him because he just spends most of his time in his tardis now um and if anyone wants to talk to him they they can only give one word uh and th- whatever that word is he will decide if you're like deem worthy to talk to him and the governess comes up with the word pond pond he, yeah he immediately responds to that and uh, meanwhile, there is this uh, enemy that's going around that is animating snowmen who are killing people, freezing them to death. And uh, we find out that this, this, this guy claims to be the doctor's greatest enemy, and he calls himself G.I. for the great intelligence. The great intelligence. Is this his first appearance? Because I love this guy. 
Well, technically, no, because he splices himself. Oh yeah, that's right. We'll <laughs> all get, throughout his time, we'll get, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, later. but I've always he been is, here, Doctor. <laughs> he's been the greatest enemy of this season and kind of the rest. <laughs> there of. you go. Um, and it's a. Uh, it, it, so anyway, yeah. So while they're they're escaping, uh, GI and the snowman, um, she's kind of questioning Clara, and Clara is sort of matching him with banter, and realizes that he already had an escape, and she pulls down a ladder with an umbrella, and it's all really fun. We get to see the new TARDIS, and she says it's smaller on the outside, which is new. <laughs> it's not usually how people respond. Yeah. <laughs> um. And you know they they defeat the great intelligence uh, very briefly, but Clara or yeah, Clara the governess actually ends up dying, and she says the exact same thing that Oswin said, which was "Run, you clever boy, and remember me." That weirds him out, and he gets in his TARDIS and, and flies away. Um, and that's more of a gist of the episode. Um, I've only watched this actually once, so I'm glad I retained as much as I did. I remember really liking this episode and as a special, I think it is very interesting. Um, and I feel like it was very fast paced. So it's definitely a four for me. It's a three for me. It's not my, uh, most favorite episode. Um, maybe a 3.5 because I really like, um, the grand intelligence. Um, yeah. And, and, and killer snowmen look cool. Uh, but yeah, I, w- I would say about a three to a three point five. I love I love Jenna Coleman, so seeing her pop up again in the season just got me more hyped and made me initially start raising questions like, hey, that's the girl in the TARDIS. For why? How so? What? How does this make sense? You know, it's definitely intriguing. And and having somebody like Clara um, in these different episodes, um, I think, is another reason why uh, it it pulled you in. You know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say about this episode. It's it was a, it was a definitely solid, not the worst. Yeah, it's a solid Christmas special, and I like the flashbacks to the classic Doctors at the end because at the end yeah. it shows like her just being like, "Pick, pick that TARDIS, Doctor." Like, I, right. <laughs> hey, Doctor, run over there. Okay, doo You know, that's the second Doctor because right. the flute. <laughs> right, right, right. I All right, that was cool. I did. I did too. I did. I did. Um, I. I. I think it really leaps into the second half super well too. I think it's a lot of great setup for a Christmas special, which we don't always get. Sometimes it's just like, and the Doctor saved the day. So this <laughs> really launched us into the second half. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, all right. So going into the next episode, the Bells of Saint John. Um, this is like a, a grand introduction into uh, Clara's character. Uh, Because we find out that she came into this world on a leaf and it hit her dad in the face and caused him to go in front of a car and then a woman saved him and that's the mom. That's how they met, had Clark. Um, We also find out that her mom passed away. And it's uh, she is now a nanny and uh, for for two kids and uh, she really uh, is looking for more in life. Meanwhile, the doctor has become a monk and is... uh, you know, he's in the TARDIS and he gets a phone call, which he never usually gets because he forgot that the phone was even patched to his TARDIS that way. And he gets a call for IT support because this episode is all about Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is that this uh, Wi-Fi signal pops up. But if you click on it, it totally takes over your computer and sort of traps your soul inside of it. So it's uh, um, so anyway, so she gets uh, she gets a random number uh, from a lady who uh gives him the best IT support that she can get and it's the doctor's number and he figures out that it's uh it's the same girl um that he's met already so he takes his TARDIS and goes there uh, goes to the house that she's watching and tries to help her with the Wi-Fi um because she clicked it but then she she left the screen um and there she then gets attacked by one of the the bots Mm -hmm. but the doctor reverses it um, and she, she wakes up okay, and he, he, he's guarding her all night, and then they use a plane that, lo- like, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, they watch overnight, but then they realize a lot of these bots 
uh, notice them. So they turn off all the lights uh, in the city and a plane is going to crash directly into them, but they find a way to turn the lights back on and the, the plane lands safe. It's great. And Good then they episode. go. Yeah. So then they, they uh, take the TARDIS to the next morning and they go get breakfast. And it turns out that Clara has got patched with um, a computer hack. So now she knows how to, to do computers and it's, it's uh, it's an interesting pseudoscience that I appreciated. Um, I like how the bots kept like changing control over people um, and talking to the doctor, and then Clara gets absorbed, and the doctor is like, "I'm coming for you." And he takes his motorcycle and he turns on the uh, the, the anti grav stuff so he can ride the motorcycle up the building, stops the lady and absorbs her because it turns out that he wasn't there; he was still in the diner. It was all the bot that he was controlling uh, remotely. And so she has to free everybody from the internet. And it turns out the great intelligence was involved with the whole thing. And he releases her back to when she got taken over. And it turns out he has been possessing her since she was a little girl. And that's, it's kind of, kind of fucked up. It is um, extremely fucked up. It's something then, about uh, being a grand intelligence that just takes away all of your empathy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then anyway, he's uh, the doctor invites Clara, and Clara is like, "Is that what you do? You just entice people that way?" And he's like, "I don't know. Show up tomorrow, and maybe I'll come." And that's the uh, end of the episode. Yeah, already establishing that Clara's different. I like to call this one Clara Prime because they still haven't really like explained Alpha Clara. Yeah, Alpha <laughs> Clara, like Clara Prime. Like this is the 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 Marvel six one six Clara. And all the other ones were just, like, scattered. But even this Clara that he travels with is just another Clara that's scattered through his timeline. It's just right, his right, companion right. Clara. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and as bittersweet as uh, when we get to um, when she leaves in Capaldi season, as bittersweet as it is, totally able to come back, you know? Like, totally able to come right, back. Right. Doesn't she fly? Doesn't she end up, like, flying off with Missy at the end in the TARDIS anyway? Like... Uh, no, she flies off with me. Me, that's what and, I meant to say, not Missy, me. Yeah, Maisie, and, Maisie uh, Williams' character. TARDIS diner. Yeah. That's and so that cool. chameleon circuit on that TARDIS also breaks. So it's always a diner. Oh, man, that's so great. Yeah, I, I hope we get the diner in the 60th anniversary with me and Jenna. It's like, you know, that, that, would, that, would, that would be so cool. That would Give be me cool. That. Give me that. Um, so for this one, I think, uh, it's a really good start. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's not my favorite though. I think it's a 3.5 for me. Mm-hmm. Um, just cause not everything was kind of airtight. I thought it was weird how they could control people with the, ta- like with the, like in controlled motions through a tablet sort of thing, like raise and lower it. Yeah. I thought that was kind of weird. Um, Something but about the shows... bots you like totally buy. Yeah, I like the part where he goes up the the wall with the motorcycle. That part's really cool. Right, but when I realize that it's not him and it's a bot, but, that's yeah. where I'm kind of like, like mm. ah, you just okay. remote control it's like card. Him in the, it's like with him and the test selector, mm-hmm. where like, like wait, so you've you've been inside the test selector this entire time, like look into my eye and the that you've been controlling it that well. The thing that we've been watching in the previous episodes struggling to like properly be human you got to work properly and then then you kissed your wife in the in the suit so the wife's married to the suit and not you <laughs> the wife's married to the suit <laughs> the wife's married to the test selector not not the doctor that's so funny right um yeah. um yeah, I would say yeah. about a 3 for me because it wasn't even until, you know, since I'm on the kind of behind end, I I go off of like what what I remember and I and I didn't really remember and which is crazy because it's it's Clara Prime's first uh Alpha Clara's first episode. It's like I I feel like I should remember this more. Um but yeah, I I I I only remember really like the the beginning part of like Clara like cooking the souffle. Um, and I even think that's a later episode, actually. Um, I don't remember. I, I'm trying to feel like I remember the beginning of the episode, but I really do remember the motorcycle um, and the uh, and the robot. But yeah, it was, it was a pretty good episode. Three, three, I would say, from 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 if memory serves. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, moving right along to episode eight. Episode eight? Uh, this is my, I'm going to say right off that, already my golden five. Because uh, it's, it's my goldenest, platinum, platinum. Diamond uh, five. Diamond five. Whatever, Grandmaster five. Uh, Rings of Akaton. I've talked about this episode a bunch, so I'll try not to bore with all the details. But this, ep- um, I actually read an article too about a lot of people didn't totally like this episode. Why? Um, but, but upon rewatching it, mm-hmm. they really understood it, and I, I, I get it. it was, there's, there's a lot of content here. So anyway, the premise of this uh, episode is the Doctor takes um, Clara to this new planet that is really close to a sun and everything there is based on trading and it, you trade what is valuable to you. And um, it turns out that they uh, have to keep this God asleep by singing the hymn that's been going on for ever, basically. And uh, the princess, uh, she's running away because she's concerned about her duty. She doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to sacrifice herself. Um, and she sings a song, but it doesn't please the God. So she gets taken to the temple. And the whole thing is that she has to be eaten to keep him asleep. Um, the doctor and Clara, then they take a bike by trading, uh, her mom's ring to, to get over there. And, uh, he has to use his sonic to lift the door, which has an acoustic lock, which is cool. Cause it's like, an, uh, it's, it's got a lock on it that constantly changes the combination like thousands of times. So he has to lift it mentally which is really cool um and they, they get inside and these uh these these troops or whatever they're they're supposed to guard it until the uh to guard the song and keep it going so they kind of have to fight them off while there's this like vampire looking dude laying there but they eventually get the guy to stop singing he's like and the song ended with me and he leaves anyway <laughs> the vampire guy turns out not to be the god and he is the God's, God's alarm clock, and he wakes up the sun, which is the God. Um, so then they're like, uh, you know, they're like, oh, man. But you said, you said we don't walk away. He's like, we don't. But we, when we got to protect her, and we have to run, and run until you're out from under the shadow. Uh, kind of a weird line, but, you know. Uh, so they, they take the, the scooter back, and then he gives the most heart-bearing speech of uh, any doctor I've ever seen. And meanwhile, the princess wants to help, so she's singing, and they're all singing, and it's all climactically big. And we think that he's beaten the sun, and he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> uh, and then Clara, she rides back, and her solution is like, this is the most important leaf in human history, and it has... Uh, it's full of all of the memories that never happened, and it's an infinite amount, and it that's what beats the sun because infinity is too much. Um, the The people they're they're so grateful for like saving them, and uh, they give her the mom's ring back. They want her to keep it, and then um, he drops her off. And sort of the cliffhanger is that he watches them at the funeral mm-hmm. when uh, when the mom died when she was a kid, um, and then that's the end of that episode. Glowing five for me. It's because of the speech. Uh, the one, the only complaint I've ever had about this episode, though, is what happens when the sun is gone. <laughs> it's like, do they die? Or like, it's probably. I mean, that thing was providing. That thing was providing light. No, mm-hmm. and heat and an atmosphere and. Yeah, you kind of need so that. It, what, 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 I don't. I don't know what to do with that. I mean, <laughs> anyway. Either. So just curl up with a blanket. Hope I don't get cold. (laughs) Yeah, man. Glowing five for me too, but I want to take this time because to say your favorite episode, I'm going to give you the floor. And I want you to tell me as a Doctor Who fan, as a person who's watched all the episodes, specials, read the books, you know, you've done so much research for the podcast too, and you do the podcast. Why out of all the episodes, why is Matt Smith's Rings of Akaton your favorite episode? Well, I mean, I, I've said it a million times. It's the it's the speech, you know. Like, um, so I did this uh, when I was in uh, theater in college. I did this speech as my monologue for the class. Yeah, you did. Um, and it was really hard. And I, I ended up with my final project. I still didn't feel like I had it quite right because, like, 
it's such a big set of shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. Like if you can imagine being the person who is just, you know, you keep living on it's, there's this idea of immortality that he has, and he is constantly going through life that never finishes. It would be fine if you were around maybe other people who are living that immortality with you, but every single person he has come into contact with eventually dies and or goes away or or wherever and he has to he has to leave and that's just that's his role and you know he goes and he does things out of kindness to 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 help people and and you know be be the doctor and you know with 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 later stuff you know that might that might change a lot of of how he thinks about stuff but you know for the most part you know there you know he is just going through something that is so unimaginably painful mm-hmm. but he decides to do amazing things with it and you know the fact that he finally gets to just bear his soul to something that is just this awful thing and i that the that the thing doesn't even comprehend of like the things that he's gone gone through like he talks about going to the omega universe with the time lord the ant like the antimatter universe and it's like uh, like the, there's some real deep cuts and he talks about everything that he's lost. Like, you know, his, his whole people that thousands of companions, I'm sure. Um, and like, it's, it, it's, a, it's a real tough, uh, watch, you know, you really feel for him when he's saying those things. It's, it's a deep cut. And yeah, I think it, it, it kind of goes in like top monologues of all time. Not, not just top doctor who monologue. Um, one of the best monologues. You're right. I think that is probably the best example of his best acting on this show. I remember that speech. I love that speech. You really you really do kind of get, like you were talking about how when Stephen Moffat was making the show, I said, you don't really know much about the Doctor. Well, there you go, right? Like, that's the Doctor in that speech. Like, everything. All of the pain and all of the torment that he's gone through, all of the love that he's given people and not gone in return, all of the civilizations that he saved. And tragic story, the Doctor, but it's who else you know like I, I love these like i'll see these tier lists of like anime characters and it'll be like goku one punch man and at the top will be like doctor who they'll be like ah you know because i mean who else man who else like i I, well, I i get it i get it and i love that episode so much it's so good like i remember i remember the first time i watched it um i was watching it with alex mm-hmm. and uh, i had really gotten into doctor who that last year and we were watching the new episodes together and he was not supposed to watch this episode yeah he was supposed to wait and watch it with his girlfriend when he got home yeah but he's like he's like fuck it we're just gonna watch it and we were not expecting that at all and then all of a sudden he's like giving a speech and like and then the episode ends and we're like what just happened <laughs> what do i do i don't know what to do with my life now that was the best Let's thing go, ever. We go. yeah love yeah. love oh and platinum five yeah all the all the stars uh, I mean, obviously the sun thing, but like that's such a that there's nothing that can break that episode. Like it is so perfectly summed up, and it came at just the right time. Like you know, we with the reboot, I think it just got all the fans like super involved. Yeah, and and you know they 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 know that the show used to exist. So like when when it was happening, mm-hmm. biggest build up ever, and like they had already started hyping for the fiftieth. Yeah, so like. It can't get any crazier than that, right? A lot of Doctor Who mania around this time, too. Mm-hmm. Most definitely right. agree. Yeah, definitely definitely five. Definitely going up on the Hall of Fame is the one of the best of the uh, episodes of ever mm-hmm. of Doctor Who. For sure, for sure. All right. A um, little bit of a downward turn for episodes after this. Kind of hard to top. Uh, but we go into episode nine, which is Cold War. Um, this one takes place when uh, the Doctor and Clara are going to go to Vegas and somehow end up in a Soviet submarine during the Cold War. <laughs> and they are, uh, they're like on the way to sink. Uh, but they Vegas. find a way to, 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 to pull themselves in, uh, on a ledge. It's because they have a Martian on their ship, a war general. Um, and basically, they 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 react pretty negatively because he's like this 
old war general that had gone missing for 5,000 years. Um, this is another episode I had to rewatch because I just had no idea. Yeah, um, it's pretty lackluster. And it turns out, yeah, I well, mean, there, there's some. It's 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 a dark episode. Yeah. Like they're a lot of they're having like power issues and stuff like that. Um, and it turns out that the Martian can actually leave his suit, which is like very Iron Man like. Um, but he's like a tentacle monster, more like uh, more more like a Dalek on the inside, but more. He has limbs and fingers and stuff. Yeah. Um, so he goes around, he leaves his armor and he, you know, he's like killing people on the ship and they eventually they get to the standstill where he's like, I will blow up this sub if it means stopping you from causing world war three on the planet. Cause he's like threatening to launch torpedoes. Um, but the, the Martian signal that he sent out at the beginning of the episode finally is received and he gets picked up by the Martians and they leave. Um, and then he decides to spare them. So, and then they realized that the TARDIS, when it materialized away, it actually materialized to the other pole. And they're on the South Pole, so they have to go to the North Pole. Uh, and that's the end of the episode. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's um, not, it's not bad. I don't the remember not, a single thing about this episode. I saw a frame from this episode when I was looking at the list from this season episodes the other day. Um, but I do not remember this episode at all. Um, so I'm going to give it a 1.5 for that because there was nothing memorable about this episode. Um, I didn't even remember that it was on a submarine. But that is okay because sometimes when you when you haven't watched an episode in a while, that's how you really know if it's good or not because you only right. remember the stuff. And if it's not memorable in a show about a, – a, in, a, in, a, in a podcast that you do a show about – then you, you have to be honest. Be like, you have to be honest. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so I will I will say a one point five because I'm sure you know Clara's in it and that's always worth a point right there, at least a half point. And then right. you know, uh what what do you give this episode? Uh two. Two, two for me. Okay, so I'm not um, far off. I'm not far off. Uh it could be argued two point five, but it's not because it won't there's, be. it not won't on be. this podcast. <laughs> And uh, there's just I, I like I like the the old scientist in it, you know, him singing "Hungry Like the Wolf." I thought that was funny. Oh, okay, okay, uh, there we go. That's a thing. Uh, it's weird too, because like later we get another Martian episode with Capaldi, and they don't look at all like he does. So Martian redesign. Yeah, redesign for sure. So there's a continuity error there, but that's more on the later episode's fault, not the current episode's. Facts. Um, yeah, but still a two. Sorry. Can, mm, it's a, more like a bottle episode. Mm-hmm. Well, more like a recycling bag full of bottle episodes. Mm-hmm. That's perfectly put. What's the... I don't, know about, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, episode 10, Hide, is... Uh, an interesting episode where they go to this manor, which is uh, haunted and they meet this psychic lady and this uh, professor. They are trying to communicate with spirits and it turns out they find out that there is one of their, um, one of their descendants that they have, cause they don't know that they end up together um, is stuck in a pocket universe with a creature. And they go to that universe by bridging the gap by amplifying the psychic lady's powers and they uh, the doctor gets trapped in that dimension because she can't hold it for very long and he goes and he rescues her and brings her back and it turns out that the creature was for some reason also at the manor and it turns out that there's two creatures and that they're not witnessing a horror story it's a love story and they're the creatures are separated because one is trapped in the other dimension and one is in the real world so they take the tardis through the portal and bring the other creature back so they can be together. That's adorable. And I love that line he gives too, where he's like, like, Oh, this is a ghost story. It's a love love story. story. Yeah. I remember that line too. Uh, One of the few things uh, I remember about this episode, but I remember liking this episode. I remember the haunted house. I remember the psychic lady. I remember the love story part. I remember the ending too. So I'm going to say about a three for me. Three for me as well, actually. Um, and I also forgot to mention the line that he says when he gets trapped there. He's like, I am the doctor and I am afraid. And they, that was like straight trailer bait. But it was still a great line. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
All right. That, that's kind of all I had about the episode. It's three. It's, it's just three. It's a middle of a road episode for me. It's yeah. uh, not crazy special, but it's not bad. Yeah. It does the job. Gets does in, the job. gets out. Fun time doctor show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, episode 11. This is a really good episode. This one is Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. Yes. Uh, I love this episode. Such a good episode. A lot of info. A lot of info. A lot of stuff happens. It's a TARDIS episode. Uh, so great. So great. Um, so uh, they're the scrappers that are going through um, a part of space, and the doctor decides to let Clara drive the TARDIS. Um, but because he had the shields down so that she could fly properly, they accidentally crash into each other, and it messes up the TARDIS like so much. Where... Um, everything gets damaged, and he's like, I'm offering you guys the score of a lifetime to go into the TARDIS. And it turns out, he's like, I'm not talking about the TARDIS, I'm talking about Clara, which is one of a kind. And they they, they, they go down through uh, the TARDIS, and they're trying to find Clara, and there are these like weird molten creatures that are following them and trying to escape. The Clara finds the Doctor's name, in the library, which she, uh, no one had ever really seen before. He's told people his name, like River and like one other person. Um, but Clara found the name. And they they finally find Clara and they're running from the, the creatures and they have to realize they have to go through the engine room, which is uh, powered by a, a Type 2 supernova that's, in, that's suspended in time, which is really cool. Uh, but then they realize they get trapped on both sides. Um, and the creatures that are been chasing them are actually them, but they've been in that room too long that they turned into the molten creatures and it, and it, and it scares them. Um, so the two brothers that are with them that are the scrappers, they get molded together and that's kind of funny. And, uh, they get inside the room, but they get stuck at a cliff and it turns out and he, the doctor, you know, he, he starts like freaking out and he's like, and who are you? What do you who, like Clara? Like I, like I was in a Dalek asylum and that Dalek was you. I, I went in Victoria and London, there was a governess and that was you. Who are you? And then she's like, I'm just scared of you right now. And uh, it, he realizes that she's just a normal girl, but it, he also figures out that what's happening is that the TARDIS is just scared and doesn't want you going near anything. So they go, finally into the engine room where they get to see the eye of harmony, which is destroyed. And the eye of harmony has only been mentioned like a few other times, but it's the conduit that controls the power in the TARDIS. Very important piece. Um, and they figure out that if they reset the timeline by throwing a, uh, I can't remember, it's not like a grenade, but it says like big, big red button mm -hmm. and he throws it to himself so that he stops everything from happening from ever happening. Um, the, the B-plot with the scrappers, it turns out that the kid who was more electronic, he ends up running the show, and, you know, everything in the TARDIS is fine. Um, this episode's a five for me. It's really good. I love yeah. everything about it. Um, I love all the information. I love that Clara finds out and then forgets. That's also really funny. Yeah. Um, the the scrapper B-plot wasn't bad either. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, I wish, I wish they would have done more with that before they... Um like ended her arc you know because the correlation mo mo mostly just the correlation between the clara spread out throughout time and and this specific clara that he's traveling with right now i would have loved that explained a little bit more you know because also when he starts traveling with uh clara we don't see other versions of clara anymore um throughout time it's it's just that clara um and is the clara that shows up with me in the diner the same clara that had the raven fly through her did she just survive that or is that another clara throughout time that found me that also has the memories of of a previous clara i think it, i think it is her mm -hmm. you think she just survived yeah no no um you remember the doctor ended up forgetting her not the other way around oh that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. She just doesn't have a heartbeat. Is the thing mm. her heart? Her last heartbeat is paused. Mm. Um, spoilers. Um, Thank you. I I just okay. needed that uh, exp that part explained. But I'm still curious. Like, what happens to all the other Claras throughout time when the Doctor starts traveling with her? Do 
is it because well, he's with her she can't cross her own time stream so she just never runs into herself or no 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 we'll, we'll and we'll explain this in the in the in the next not in the next episode but in two episodes because it actually is revealed in the season finale but it's not very talked about very well. Yeah. In the name of the doctor or okay. what she actually jumped into. Yeah. Because it's not actually his time stream. Mm. It's to his time stream to a point. Okay. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. All right. That makes me feel a lot better because that's been the biggest, not just because Clara is my favorite companion, but that's just always been my biggest question with Doctor Who, the correlation between the Clara that he travels with to the Claras that he randomly meets across time right you know? mm-hmm. i've always wondered about that uh, so oh yeah what do you rank this episode oh i loved this episode this was um the the journey to the center tardis uh, uh this is my glowing five i just i love the this tardis is five? yeah it, this is my glowing five this is my this is my super saiyan five um oh I, <laughs> yeah what was it not rings of akaton i'm sorry i'm sorry rings of akaton is a five but the the how you're going no worries. <laughs> You're allowed to be wrong, Freddie. I allow you to be wrong. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. I just, I love the TARDIS episode. I love uh, Clara finding out about herself and um, how she spread out through all time. And I loved uh, how he didn't really give those soldiers a choice to help him find Clara at the beginning. He's yeah. Like, you know, nah, nah, you're coming with me, motherfuckers. Um, oh, yeah. They, they also had the cool. Yeah, because he sets the the uh, timer on them, mm-hmm. like the self destruct. You have to help me this much time. It turns out it's not real, but yeah. uh, also the the everything room where like the pods that uh, they can create anything. I thought that was super dope. Uh, the the they, you know he he emphasizes too about how the Tardises are grown, yeah. not built. Yeah, because they're real uh, in that episode. Yeah. They, I mean, they and David Tennant talks about that. Like he, he has a line about it in his previous mm-hmm. thing, but they they go into more detail in that episode. Yeah. Um, all right, moving right along. Moving right along. Episode twelve, Crimson Horror. Uh, this unfortunately gets my. Uh, well, we have got glowing five for best episodes. Our least favorite episode in the series. I don't know. We, we can give it our. Uh, Bronze medal award. <laughs> participation award. It gets a participation uh, yeah. award. Cr- Cr- Crimson Horror gets the participation trophy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this episode is just incredibly boring. I don't remember it. So the Crimson Horror starts off where Madame Vastra and Jenny Flint are reviewing photos in a dark room. And they realize that inside one of the... They, they look deeper or zoom in on uh, this guy's eye. And they realize that the doctor is in the reflection of the guy's eye in the photo. So they go to Victorian London and they rescue the doctor and Clara, who have been uh, sort of like how in Star Wars, frozen in carbonite, except mm-hmm. they're frozen, they're, not, they're turned red. Mm-hmm. And um, it turns out this lady who is running this academy uh, has an alien that's attached to her that is trying to turn everybody a certain way so that she can take over the world and turn everybody into this uh, new race of people. And uh, then they, she goes to a tower, but they, they made it so that what gets launched up into the air, it's, it's amazing Spider-Man plot, you know, like where they're trying to turn everybody into lizards, mm-hmm. but instead turn everybody red. Uh, but they, they stop it from happening. And then uh, the the alien gets separated from from the lady, and they they kill it, and she like falls down the clock tower. And it's kind of gruesome. I remember, I remember the clock tower part actually. It's always the yeah. endings with these episodes that that I feel like I remember, and the setup like this episode. I know I remember nothing. I'm gonna have to look it up on my phone kinda, right quick. I tried rewatching it, but I got so bored with it that I just didn't. I was just like, I got other stuff to do. Yeah, that's um, the problem with Doctor Who, honestly, is that as much as I love the show, their their slower episodes are like, oh my mm. god. <laughs> Get to the point! Yeah. Um, but yeah, this episode, uh, for me, is good. it's a one. It's a one. Sorry. It's a one. And the point is for Clara. Red Doctor. He gets a participation trophy because the Doctor is red. 
1.5. Right. Red Doctor. That's cool. Red I've never doctor. seen the Doctor be red before. <laughs> Need yourself a red doctor. Yeah, you ever had a? We've had white doctors. We've had woman doctors. How about a red doctor? There you go. One point five participation trophy. Still a fun. Still, still not a bad. I mean, not not a terrible episode. Definitely well, worth the watch. Did you like that one more than Cold War? Or uh, did you? Yeah, think that- I I do remember enjoying Crimson Horror more than uh the Cold War because I do not remember a single thing. About the Cold your participation War. trophy goes to Cold War, though. Oh, that's right, because I gave this a one point five for the Red Doctor. I think you gave Cold War a two also, but you didn't remember anything. Ew. Well, I just remember uh, the submarine. I remember all the scenes like on the submarine, but I probably, that's like all the <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like they're only on the submarine. I re- I guess I just remember the setting then. To be honest, then um. But to be honest, yeah, I would have to give Crimson Horror the participation trophy. I just feel like I remember more about cold war which is basically yeah. nothing but i remember i didn't even know like the doctor was red in crimson horror and it's literally in the name so but at least i i knew that the cold this cold war was on a submarine i knew that but right but oh. i i completely forgot everything about cold cold war uh for, for, completely forgot everything about crimson horror rather right right, right. all right and before we get on to our uh not it's not actually the season finale it is just the last episode we're covering uh, because the season time we're going to cover in the next specials um, is the Nightmare in Silver. But before we do that, we got some fun facts oh, about Matt Smith. Let's go! You know what time it is! Uh, you know what time it is! Fun facts with David. That's right. Every time we break down the season, David searches the internet for Doctor Who fun facts that we can tell you before we review the season finale. David. I'm excited. What are your fun facts? All right. So these ones are a little bit less Doctor Who-y and more about Matt Smith. Um, but basically, so before he was on Doctor Who, he appeared alongside Billy Piper in a few shows. I think it was like Ruby in the Smoke and then like one other one. And also, I think he appeared in a show, an episode of a show after or during when he was the Doctor. So he's got to work with Billy Piper. That's uh, really fucking cool to me. He is a person who's very passionate about music. He can play guitar. Um, he originally wanted to be a footballer, but got injured and then took, um, he went to theater school. Uh, and thank God for that, because we would have missed out on Matt Smith if he had just been a footballer. Is that why he plays soccer in the Lodger episode? <laughs> He's just good yeah. as fuck at soccer, so they were just like, and, they can play soccer. And in The Power of Three. He does yep. like... Uh, he like he does the the bounces of the soccer ball on yeah. his knee and he gets like one million something. I doubt. But, <laughs> I doubt um, Matt Smith. Million's not a real number, so heck. Well, he gets like to such a high number and then like he gets back and he's like, How long have you been gone? Like, uh an hour. And I'm like, no, you didn't. It's <laughs> physically impossible <laughs> that you did the soccer ball that many times. Anyway. Um uh, and so also, I, th- I remember uh, I mentioned this in the last episode, but how he was revealed uh, was in Doctor Who Confidential. Mm-hmm. And it's just a random little bomb yeah. in there. And I thought that was really cool. I think that's still the coolest reveal to this day. I do like Peter Capaldi's also. Um, but, you know, I hope they do a cool reveal with the next Doctor too. I hope that becomes a recurring theme, a new way. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not a TikTok, uh, I think it'll be uh, a really cool, uh, interesting reveal. If it's a cool TikTok though, if it's like a what, like like the how they did the TikTok for uh, the sea shanty for the sea devils, that was a cool trailer. Oh yeah, yeah. If they do that, yeah. If that, they that do like a cool, cool. But um, I will say there is a video that keeps popping up on my timeline of how each doctor uh, in the reboot was announced, and like it keep it keeps popping up on my timeline. I'm, I'll have to watch it because the way you described um the way you described Matt Smith and and Dave, uh, and Peter Capaldi's both sound really cool and i i don't think i've um i've only caught it secondhand in articles like breaking news um but i would i would like mm-hmm. to see how they announced um like how uh do you do you know how they announced uh jody whittaker yeah there was like a cut scene yeah uh and she it's actually my her, least favorite yeah she took off her hood yeah. yeah um it's not my least favorite reveal obviously like there were news articles before and an online article for like the new doctors but 
uh, since Matt Smith, they had cool yeah. sort of drops. Mm-hmm. And I think that was my least favorite of the new ones. The new Still ones, better yeah. than a news article by far. I agree. Um, 100% agree. Who wants to read? Um, <clears throat> besides that, he was the youngest person to ever play the doctor today. Um, yeah. And before him, I think uh, Peter Davis was the youngest for a long time. Very cool. Um, until, until Matt Smith showed up. Yeah. And then lastly, Matt Smith actually didn't want to leave the show when he did. Oh, really? He wanted to stay longer. Mm. And I've never heard that before. I, That's kind of sad to hear because he was great. <laughs> like, I would have fully supported it too if we would have gotten like just a couple more specials out of yeah. him. Yeah. Um, with with different people, you know, like just mm-hmm. whoever. Like yeah. I'd be I'd be for that. Yeah. All right, here we go. Last uh, episode uh, of, for this episode, which is episode 13, Nightmare in Silver. Nightmare in Silver. Um, so at the end of the Crimson Horror episode, when uh, when Clara gets back home to Nanny, the kids, they point out that they know what's going on because they found a picture of her in Victorian London X hundred years ago. So... They're like, you have to take us traveling with you for one ride. So they have to, so they go with Matt Smith and they go to this theme park, but it's like closed down. And uh, it turns out there are these little cyber mites, which uh, are revealed for the first time uh, that, that are, because like Cybermen have like taken over that planet. And it turns out Warwick Davis is there and he is. Uh, he he's running the place, or what, or or what he's saying, even though there's nobody there. Is he British? It's completely empty. Uh, yeah. he's British. I didn't know that. Well, American. maybe not. I think he might be Scottish. No, oh. there you go. Um, uh, hopefully I love the Willow. Mad at me. Willow's such an underrated movie. That is such a great. Oh, Val gosh. Kilmer, Mad Morgan. Yeah. I watched the movie so many times as a kid. Yeah. It was so good. Shout out Willow. Shout out Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, who's the, who played the girl in that movie? She was a really good actress, too. Mm-hmm. Even the evil queen. Yeah. Also. Solid movie. Great. Solid movie. Solid movie. Solid movie. Good, good uh, George Lucas film before uh, it was like he decided making kids movies with Ewoks. Yeah. I mean, it was like Lord of the Rings before Lord of the Rings. It was very, um, it was very like fantasy field, and they did a really good job yeah. with the plot too. Yeah, yeah, because you know they're they're in the forest at some points. They're mm-hmm. in the snow. There's like a war going they're, on in the background. War, war going on. Bird cages, castles, bird cages, uh, taverns. Yeah, yeah. I remember Val Kilmer when he shows up in a mm-hmm. bird cage? Hey, give me out, give me out of here, man! <laughs> Damn, but he needed to brush his teeth fuck like yeah. his teeth were gnarly yeah uh anyway tangent uh, so yeah warwick davis uh and then it turns out that there there's cybermen there and they have infected the kids and uh they're being controlled by the cybermen remotely it also gets on the doctor and the the the, the cybermen are trying to control him and he gets into a phase where he is constantly battling for control over his body and mind Meanwhile, new Cybermen have shown up who have incredible speed. They are little speedster Cybermen, and they're trying. The uh, Warwick Davis, uh, Clara, and a, a ragtag team are trying to hold them off with their devices, even though most of them don't even work on the Cybers. So they're they're fighting them off, and Clara's trying to talk to the Doctor. He's like, "I'm going to do a chess match against myself." And, uh, you know, he's constantly fighting himself and he like hits on Clara and then Clara's like, that's not the real you. And then he gets out of it by amplifying this, uh, taser device and putting gold on his face to take control and get the Cybermen out of him. Um, and then they're, they're actually going to have the entire thing destroyed the, the planet that they're on to stop the Cybermen and they're all going to die. And then Warwick Davis reveals that he's actually like emperor of, uh, like i don't know most of the universe i guess he's very important and they beam them all up to that ship and then he proposes to clara she rejects him candidly and uh you know 
they uh i think that's pretty much the end of the episode because they get dropped off and that's kind of it yeah it was cheeky you know i really enjoyed this episode it felt like it had real stakes uh, i really liked like uh not every episode every even now even some episodes of the doctor that are really good will kind of feel more like chill or kind of like run in the mill but i really enjoyed this episode especially where the doctor is like talking to himself and playing chess with himself and a little thing on his face yeah it was good it was a really good episode i really enjoyed it what would I rank it though? Hmm. What about you? I'm gonna think. Um. I think I gotta say four point five. I was thinking five, and part of me was like, "Well, it could be four, but I think I'm gonna go in between because yeah. it's it's a really solid it's episode. Really I love episode. everything. Yeah, yeah. Start the stakes. Finish. You're totally right. The pacing on some of those episodes where things are time sensitive because mm-hmm. like the things are critical that they happen now. Yeah. Um, are, are really good and like Warwick Davis, an amazing job. Uh, mm-hmm. I think not enough really happened with the kids. Mm-hmm. Like they get controlled, and and cyber mites clearly aren't as dangerous as we thought. Even though that should be like, um, like something. So it's like it, that's a crazy idea in general. But I guess the Dalek particles are a little worse than that since they just turn you over time. How do why, um, would, why would why would Cybermen need the little stupid little mouse cybers that were in the mall? That one episode, if they oh, have cyber mites, cyber cyber mats, cyber mats, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if they have literally uh, like a tiny little thing that could fly. Why do you need? I've always thought about that. Like, why do you need a mat if you have a mite? Did mats come first? Well, is I that think, what it is? Matt, yeah, I think mats came first because you know, like cybermen, like they're constantly improving. Yeah, and all I remember from that episode where they were chasing the cyber mat was that it was running away and it was a mouse that they were like running after it. i don't remember it doing anything yeah was it like collecting data maybe I mean, maybe like that either. maybe which i feel like a cyber might would be better at it too because it could just fly around undetected mm-hmm. why you need it on the ground what's well, on the ground that needs collecting like dirt samples was well, a little bitey mouth yeah am i am i, sound, I don't know. i sound jaded i don't, I, I don't know no no I, I don't know like that's the thing is like i think there's not a clear answer i think that's the problem there should be a clear answer yeah. um but yeah, I, I gotta rank this one a four point five just because it's such a cheeky ending where he's like, "And I'm the emperor of everything." And we're saved. What if I told you I'm that guy? What if I said that me, I'm that dude, and all this is dumb, and I'm gonna sort this out right now? Hey, right. Well, and then it, it's like you know, people died earlier. Like you could have, like we, no one had to die. You could have just done your job. Fucking whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, it's that's very, why it's a four point five for me. Maybe a four. That yeah, that that one's too big of a. You gotta you gotta talk thing. yourself down to a four. It's like what the hell did that happen? Um, I I definitely yeah. agree. I remember Warwick Davis. I remember um the chess match. I remember the doctor talking to himself. Love that. Um, yeah, I would say this is so a much good too. Yeah, it's a really yeah, good episode. Even the little background setting where it's like inside his head, all like trippy stuff like. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it take, it, and the episode takes a minute to get started, but mm-hmm. once it does, it takes off. And plus, we got yeah. Warwick Davis in in that episode. Warwick Davis, yeah, yeah. The one of one of one of the most beloved, cherished actors. They gotta today. bring him back. Yeah, they really do, man. Um, there are several people. We should do um an in between episode uh, about uh who should come back. Yeah, about like like a like a top ten, top fifteen uh actors or characters that should return to Doctor Who. That'd be so much fun to sit down and do it with you. Yeah. Uh, well, I think yeah. N- next, we're doing uh the interview. Yeah, we're in gonna between. break down the yeah we're gonna break down the Chimball interview. And then so after, after, specials, after specials, after specials two, mm-hmm. uh, we will we will do the who should come back. Yeah, so that, that's that's the pilot episode. Who should come back? Who should come who, back? Who cares? Who cares? David, who if you cares? had uh, if you other than rings of Akaton sticking out front and center to this season, um, what is your overall rating one to five of this season? There are a couple more threes and twos in here than than I actually remembered. To be honest, I kind of thought this was like the season four just, season of Matt Smith. Well, it's kind, of, it's kind of, it's like, uh, it's just there are shiny moments that yeah. are much shinier than other seasons, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 that's what it is. Because like, uh, if we go back a couple pages in my notes, <laughs> if we flip uh, back like, in time, like every other episode is good. Like Asylum is good. Dinosaurs is meh. Town called Mercy. 
Power of Three, yeah. Angels Take Manhattan, Snowman, uh, Bells of St. John. So Bells of St. John and Snowman are kind of even. Yeah. Um, and then Rings of Acton, an amazing episode. Yeah. Cold War. Yeah. Hyde, which is okay. But then Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, which is really good. Yeah. Crimson Horror, which is meh. And then Nightmare on Silver, which is good. Yeah. So, like, this episode is just flipping, like, every single time. It's the flip-floppiest uh, season, I yeah. would say, so far. Very hills and valleys. Hills and valleys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I think – I all right. So, now back to our, uh, our ranking system on the seasons. Yes. Uh, season four is still on top for me. That's mm-hmm. – there's no debating that. Yes. Um. Does season seven beat any of David Tennant's previous seasons? Yes. But I might have to change my order, though, because, like, because Christopher Eccleston's season is still really good. Mm-hmm. Mm. I would mm. say that it's better than okay. this season. I would, I would put this, I would put season seven um, in between. I think. I'd put it Four. below three, yeah, but above two, yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, in between two and, then and three. Season one, and then season season six, mm-hmm. and then season five. Yep. Season five, the lowest one. Dang. So yeah, I got a four, three, seven, two, one, six, five. It was a rough start, you know. Season five had a lot of cool moments too, but just overall, when you compare it to the other seasons, it had the slowest yeah. start, you know. Yeah, and it's it's not that it's bad. Again, no. it's yeah, like it's just how do you compare to yeah. like some of the golden stuff going on? Yeah, boys. There, to be like honest. It's- I don't want to sound like the guy that that's making a podcast about Doctor Who, but I will. I will be the guy. I don't think there is a bad season. No, there's no bad season. Yeah, like. like- there are episodes that are not clearly as good yeah. as others yeah. and specials that don't hold up. Yeah. But like, it's still, there's no bad season. Yeah. It's just, there are seasons that aren't as good. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this then. Let's tell right. Jodie Whittaker. Yeah. I was about to, that was what I was about to say. <laughs> what do you think about Jodie Whittaker? So is Jodie Whittaker's bad? It's just. No, bad. It's, it's, um, it's just a little, different yeah and you know we can and you know like i've rewatched some of the old episodes from classic who mm-hmm. there isn't anything from jody whittaker's run that is worse than classic who well there you go that's good. classic who is like a totally different show yeah and it's because where the balancing of the scale where um i would say revival has more science mm-hmm. and 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 wonder uh, classic who is more soap opera y mm. and and then like like it, you know it's it's good it's just not the same yeah tv I was think, also just so different back then too you know it was very like when like doctor who was revived by the fans yeah like russell t davis is an incredible doctor who fan mm-hmm. and when he made it more about the science and like like with the new style it was like mm-hmm. just a new age for doctor who yeah so there is Nothing I I would say would say that Jody's is worse than Classic Who. Classic Who, not that it's bad either. It's just it's from a time period that's mm-hmm. just not where we're from now. Yeah, and you know it's it's just not going to be as good writing. You know our writing gets better, and that's why we're critical because we can we can reference the old, and nostalgia plays a factor, and we have to be grateful and show homage to the previous stuff that came before that brings us to greater things, but. We can't pretend like, you know, that it's it that older stuff is better than the newer stuff because mm-hmm. we're just harsher on the newer stuff. Yeah, it makes one hundred percent sense. I actually completely one hundred percent agree with everything that you said um, because you know records get broken. You know, people become better writers because of what came before them, and right with a situation like Doctor Who where it's like. It's always been around, you know, so it's like forever. So it's like it, 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 it probably more than any other show gets to benefit from that, from like everything that came before it. And you get to build on top of that and you get to make such great writing. Um, 
we'll we'll really dive into more of the nitty gritty with Chimball in the next episode. But I will say I'm really curious to see um, what his opinions are on the episodes because from the outside in, if I just had to guess, it was like when I first like heard like negative reviews about the the Jody Whittaker run I was like well that makes sense because it was the filler guy it was the filler episode guy <laughs> that was running this show it's just gonna be a bunch of filler episodes and I was I was kind of wrong in that but I was there was a piece of that that was kind of right it it was to me it sounds like a guy who who had experience didn't have the right kind of experience or the right kind of like je ne sais quoi to kind of i don't know because Stephen moffat yeah. and russell t davis have both gone on to do immaculate shows dracula uh that one show about uh the aids pandemic in 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 the uk like they, they've gone on to do like big big shows and i'm not saying chris, chris chinball isn't going so wait, i i just learned the other day uh i just learned that it was Christian Ball, who uh, wrote Broadchurch with David Tennant and Jody Whittaker, right. and I, I think that 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 was an amazing show. I, I, I would, I would say that that's probably the the nail in the coffin as to why Jody Whittaker got the role of Doctor Who was Broadchurch. But um, I don't know, <laughs> just just a filler guy wrote wrote too many filler episodes. So when he got the handoff, he just kept writing filler episodes. I don't know. Right. I think. No. Well, I think the thing is, it's like you know, we're. I think a lot of people view it as you know, the show fell apart because mm -hmm. we put this guy on. Yeah. And it's not that, it, I don't think that it's so much that all of it's bad, it's that it's missing something vital. Like it's, it's got all the right elements, but it doesn't have the certain sort of, I mean, it had wonder, but you know, it didn't have, you know, the solutions, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the growth, mm -hmm. the powerful moments. Like it yeah. didn't have the, the edge that makes Doctor Who Doctor Who and more of just something that where it's like it's a product that we've seen before but it's you know more you know yeah cushioned down yeah and let me like, give an example let me give an example because I have a perfect example as to what we're talking about for people watching because some of you maybe be like yeah part two of the Sea Kings episode with Peter Capaldi starts off with uh, Peter Capaldi talking about Mozart and he introduces the the bootstrap philosophy or whatever or the 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 philosophy of like if if I go back in time and and I'm Mozart and I pretend to do Mozart who is really Mozart you know and and then the end of the episode uh, basically like follows that same philosophy and it's a great episode um is it one of my favorite episodes no but it's it's such a great episode because when I whenever I watch part two of Sea, sea Kings or the 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 Sea King guy I'm I'm just like what happened and like it's a well-written episode and the timey wiminess of it all is the icing on the cake but at the end of it I'm like wow what did I just watch like I'm in wonder the rings of Akaton uh we talked about earlier with the doctor pours his soul you're like wow how do you even write something like that? Like, how do you even get into the brain of a thousand year old space wizard? Like, how do you even do that? And you leave the show going, and that's what we're talking about. That, that little something extra vital, you know? And, and I kind of got that on the, um, on like the skyfall part two, uh, skyfall part one. And, you know, the Rosa Parks episode, I'll always say is one of my favorite episodes of Dr. Who period. Um, but like, that 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 that's just and again we'll talk about this more more next time on the show but like yeah that 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 i think you 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 pretty much said beautifully is that it just it just missing that that little spark when the credits roll you're like damn doctor who is dope <laughs> you know like you're just like what did i just watch you got to talk about it with people and like you just think about like yeah timey wimey where, and where when like you watch jody whitaker's like you didn't like you're like ah uh... yeah it was just another show. It was like, you know, when you get to season three of The Flash or mm -hmm. yeah. you know, season three of Arrow. Wow, most of those shows only are good for two seasons. Um, Probably just have less budget by that point. Third season oh, yeah. on CW yeah. shows is just like, all right, we have 50 people watching. Let's go get the next 50 for the next show. Bro, you know what I heard? Right, right. Um, like the average view rate weekly of The Flash is like less than 500,000. Bro, that's not even a YouTube video. That's not even like a million, like you know. Like, More people are watching YouTube yeah, than are watching the Flash. Flash. Yeah, 
more people are watching more people are watching like travel vlogs on youtube than people are watching. like i watch like watching like fucking anime podcasts plays. and shit yeah let's <laughs> play more people are watching like children play minecraft than people are watching cw shows Hoof-da. the action videos are more popular than yeah <laughs> you know what though i i will say this cw they are doing great things with superman and lois i've seen some clips and it actually they looks got really budget. good yeah they got a budget they got a superman sized budget david what are your final thoughts on season seven of Doctor Who? Uh, season seven, be prepared for whiplash because it'll go from good to in, in, to non interesting back and forth. Um, if You're you, right. If you think we are wrong within our any of our evaluations in the episodes, or you think that my synopsis didn't capture something important, please comment down below. And I hope you're excited for specials two. Uh, because it goes into a uh, Christmas special, the 50th, um, the season finale of seven, and of course the in-between part of the 50th and finale. So yes, I am so excited, man, to, to, to talk about the specials. Look, man, when, when I first saw the, the specials of Dr. Who, I, I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that before. You know, I think the only thing I can remotely ex- like uh, relate it to is uh, the first Avengers movie, to be honest, especially like that level of excitement yeah. I got seeing all of the doctor or like the, the three doctors that you've come to know and love, you know, um, even without right, cause the Avengers thing. had just happened like mm-hmm. uh, a year before. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Uh, I still think Doctor Who paved the way. Still think it was first. Five was Doctors first. is still an episode that happened. We're just saying, Doctor Who did it first, man. And we'll keep giving their ship. Them... What their ship? Their ship. Their oh ship. yeah, the flag their ship. ship. Yeah, the ship. master. That, that was in. That was master made that. Like, oh man, four years before that. Mm-hmm. We're just saying. We know you're taking everything from from Doctor Who. People who write the the Marvel scripts. We know. We know you're a fan. You guys think Tony Stark is smart. I mean, look at the doctor, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Look at the tier list, bro. Doctor's always at the top. Um, I want to see. You know, it's crazy because, like, Iron Man is building a suit to protect himself and, like, fight crime and whatever. Yeah. Doctor's smart. Doesn't even need a suit. Half the time. He's battled gods. Yeah. and And he's just in his regular clothes. Yeah, nine times out of ten, his TARDIS is usually parked somewhere, and he's just got a little sonic screwdriver. He's just smart as fuck. Yeah. And, like, the, the TARDIS is, like, such a unique, like, machine that mm-hmm. he could use it to solve most of his problems all of the time. Big fan. But instead, he's like, nah, I got, a, I got a screwdriver. I got a piece of paper that lets me in anywhere. I can talk my way out of anything. So It's facts. It's big facts. Is clever too. Just cleverness is his superpower. He'd be a fun cameo in the Doctor Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. You know, like in the background, you just see like a blue telephone, like not not like a clear like "Hello, I'm the Doctor," but just like in like one of the scenes, like during a fight scene, you just see like a blue, just see the, a blue the box, box. You know, yeah, that'd be so cool. I would love that. Just because multiverse, man. I know it's like less about time and space and different parallel realities, but the Doctor's gone to parallel realities multiple times. You know, right, right. right. Well, guys, there you go. Season 7 in the bag. Next time, be sure to join us where we will discuss the three parts of the special and, of course, the 50th anniversary. As always... Ooh, ooh, getting ahead of yourself. Next time is the ooh, uh, interview of right. Chibno. That's right. Chibno, that's right. actually. That's right. I actually found Chibno. out recently. Chib- Chibno. Chibno, yeah. Chibno. We're Americans. So we're like, um, Chibno! <laughs> Uh, but, you know, obviously, uh, after that, we will do the specials. Yes. So we got a lot in store. I know that we're going to, we're also going to talk about our favorite, uh, which who should come back episode. Stay, stay tuned for that as well. Yes. And of sure. course, our lo- we're going to do some uh, reaction watches of the new stuff together um, one of these days. <laughs> it's going to be dope, man. Um, I'm excited to uh, also cover the 100th episode with you soon. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be in the fall, maybe towards the end of the summer. Um, You know, I'm really looking forward to that. And yeah, man, make sure you guys like and subscribe so we can keep giving you a dope who cast like this. We've been the who cast and we'll see you next time.